angular acceleration. Have you ever noticed the angular motion of a fan? It starts with zero angular velocity at rest and with time angular velocity increases until it reaches a maximum angular velocity. When the fan is turned off, the angular velocity decreases with time until it stops. Before I explain further, first take the analogy of linear velocity of the box. Initially, it is at rest with velocity vi, that is initial velocity equal to zero. It is displaced from point A to point B. Its velocity increases, let's say to final velocity vf. Consider the time b delta t. Then the time rate of change of velocity of the box is final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t or delta v over delta t gives us the time rate of change of velocity which is acceleration. Let's play with some numbers before we define angular acceleration. Suppose a box is at rest and moves to point B with velocity 40 meter per second in time interval of 5 seconds. Then the acceleration will be 40 meter per second minus 0 meter per second over 5 seconds that will be 8 meter per second per second or 8 meter per second square. Now if the body moves with velocity 40 meter per second that does not change from point B to point C in 5 seconds which means velocity is constant then acceleration will be zero. Lastly if the box moves from point C to point D where it stops in time interval of 5 seconds then the acceleration would be minus 8 meter per second square. Why minus 8? Because acceleration is a vector quantity. If the velocity increases, then the acceleration is in the direction of velocity. Conversely, if the velocity decreases, then the acceleration is opposite to the velocity. With this analogy, I am sure you will better understand angular acceleration. Now let's take the example of a fan. Initially, the fan is at rest with angular velocity omega i, that is zero. As it rotates, it speeds up until it reaches maximum velocity omega f that is 4 radian per second in time period of 2 seconds. Like linear acceleration which is a time rate of change of linear velocity, angular acceleration is a time rate of change of angular velocity. So angular acceleration is 4 radian per second minus 0 radian per second over 2 seconds that is angular acceleration of 2 radian per second per second or 2 radian per second square. Note that the SI unit of angular acceleration is radian per second square. Now if the fan rotates with an angular velocity of 4 radian per second for 5 seconds which means angular velocity is constant and change in angular velocity is zero then angular acceleration will be zero too. What if the fan is turned off? Then the angular velocity decreases from 4 radian per second to 0 radian per second in time interval of 2 seconds. Then angular acceleration is minus 2 radian per second square. Like linear acceleration, angular acceleration is also a vector quantity. Its direction is along the direction of angular velocity if angular velocity is increasing. Conversely, if the angular velocity is decreasing, then the angular acceleration will be opposite to the direction of angular velocity. So the definition of angular acceleration is the time rate of change of angular velocity of a body is referred to as angular acceleration. Like angular displacement and velocity, angular acceleration is an axial vector, which means that angular acceleration always acts along the axis of rotation. Axial vectors explained in the video tag above, but its direction solely depends on the state of angular velocity. I repeat, angular acceleration is in the direction of angular velocity. If the angular velocity is increasing, and opposite to angular velocity if it's decreasing. It is represented by the symbol alpha with an arrowhead or bold alpha and the SI unit is radian per second square. There is one last thing before we wind up and that is the difference between average angular acceleration and instantaneous angular acceleration. Let's say the angular velocity of the stone changes abruptly 
from point A to point B. Here the angular velocity increases slowly, but from point B to point C, angular velocity increases quickly. The angular acceleration is 0 radian per second square initially and 4 radian per second square finally. Let the angular velocity at initial and final points be 0 radian per second and 4 radian per second respectively and the time taken by the stone be 4 seconds. Then the angular acceleration comes to be 1 radian per second square. You are like why isn't this acceleration equal to this value of acceleration, right? It is because this value is averaged over time, which means the stone does not have necessarily 1 radian per second square at every point along its path, but it is averaged over time period of 4 seconds. In other words, average angular acceleration is the ratio of total change in angular velocity to the total time taken, that is delta omega over delta t. This value of 4 radian per second square and 0 radian per second square represents the instantaneous angular accelerations at that particular instance or very short intervals of time. As name instantaneous itself suggests that angular acceleration is measured at that particular short interval or a very small instant of time. Instantaneous angular acceleration is the angular acceleration of any body at any particular instant of time. Mathematically, it is equal to the limit of the ratio delta omega over delta t as delta t approaches to zero, which means that time interval is very small, almost equal to zero, but not exactly zero. This is the concept of limit. Consult our video on limits in the description box below, which means that if a stone undergoes angular motion from point A to B with an average acceleration of 1.4 radian per second square, an initial and final angular acceleration of 0 radian per second square and 4 radian per second square, at point A, for a very small instant, instantaneous angular acceleration is zero, but average angular acceleration is at every instant 1.4 radian per second square. In short, average angular acceleration is the ratio of total change in angular velocity to the total time taken, while instantaneous angular acceleration is the angular acceleration at a particular instant of time. I hope you understood the concept of angular acceleration and the difference between average and instantaneous angular acceleration. Concept of limit will help you better understand the concept of instantaneous acceleration. Check out the video in the description box below. Quiz Find the average angular acceleration of the following. State the direction of angular acceleration as well. You know the drill. The answer to this question is in the description box, but before checking, test yourself honestly. Smart end. To memorize the concept of angular acceleration, always remember the analogy of linear acceleration, where linear acceleration is the rate of change of linear velocity, while angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity. To memorize, just remember this formula where delta omega is radian per second and delta t is second. So the angular acceleration will be radian per second square. To memorize the difference of average and instantaneous angular acceleration, just keep in mind the word average and instant from instantaneous, where instantaneous angular acceleration is change in the angular velocity for a very small interval of time or for an instant. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more such short and crisp educational videos. And also find us on social media platforms at Smartitude Official.